start now without waiting for others. Or should we wait? Okay. So yes. So this this whole thing is about Python. We want to learn Python free of charge to help ourselves um, in whatever we do. Uh, it's not to collect any money, but to understand the concept of programming so that maybe I may need a help in some aspect of the Python tomorrow. And I follow you, you can be on, you can be of help to me, or we can combine ourselves with projects and make our life very, very easy for us. So that is that is the essence of this this tutorial. I won't call it a lesson, I'll call it a learning, because we are all learning. So We'll be using Python throughout, and then we'll be using it for web applications, for data science and machine learning. We also use it for artificial neural network. I do not know if we will get the time. Other than that, we may go into uh, some aspect of artificial intelligence. Uh, that's not withstanding. We can go and deal with machine learning and deep neural network. And that is when we will talk about the image recognition system, all those things. With a web application, we'll be using Python. I've started the, the training of the lesson. So, make a sasano, So, the Python. It's just like any programming language. It's it's a very easy language compared to other languages such as PHP or C sharp, C plus plus, Java and the rest. Python is very very easy and it's a scripting language. We can use it for so many many uh, applications, whether it is a standalone applications or it's a web application. If you want to go into uh, like cyber security it would be very good if you have knowledge in Python. You would want to use it when you are dealing with, you want to communicate with the various network. You may want to use it to run the code. You may want to use Python to develop a web application or a website. So Python has so many purposes, unlike HTML. You know, HTML is simply for web. Python is not like that. It has so many, many uh, advantages. So, for today, we'll be looking at the Python IDEs that we'll be using for the... Are we there? <clears throat> Hello. Can I continue? Uh, so, as you can see my screen, these are the <clears throat> Someone is generating some noise. So let me continue. These are these are the hello. Okay, so these are if you look at my screen, these are the tools that we'll be using. So it's just a matter of you going online. We'll be using Python 3 not Python 2. So you just go online, python.org. You go and then you download the, currently it's 3.8. 
not the two point something. Anything two point something is out. Yeah, that is not what we are using. It's no longer getting support. So you look at your operating system. If you are using Windows, then you come to Windows and then you download for Windows. If you are using Mac, the same. And if you are using Linux, the same thing. So over here, I've already downloaded and installed it. Let me cancel it. And then there's another one which we'll be using. So this is the Python that we'll be using. When after installing it, you just go to your command prompt and then enter the command Python. If it's, in, it's installed, please, can you see my screen? Yeah, so the moment you get the Python version, it tells you that, yes, it is installed. If it's not installed, it will show you an error. Tell you that it has not recognized that command. So when you have it like this, you can type any command over here. You know, in uh, when we are learning programming, our first this thing is hello world. So you write it, you see that it has printed the hello world out. So you you know that you have the Python. Now you go to oh this one. I saw the easy we go to let me see what the sideline text. As for the sideline text, we will use it when we are dealing with web application. When we are dealing with web application, then we use it. And then you can go and download VS Code, Visual Studio Code. That is if you want. But this one is very important. The JetBeans. It is all these ones are IDs that makes the programming very easy for you. Use it to write your code, and you need them. When you come here, you try as much as possible to download the community version. This is the free version. Don't use the professional one. It's not free. You you have to pay for it. And see what it comes with the paid one. You can use it for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So you try as much as possible to download the community version and use it for the program. And then there's another uh, ID which is very, very important. This is Anaconda, not the snake. Hole. Anaconda. So you, yeah, perhaps, perhaps a virtual snake. So when you come here, you, you check your this thing. How do you call it? Your processor. If you are using a 64-bit type of processor, then you download the 64. If you are using the 32, you download the 32. If you are using Mac, it's the same process. You click on it, it will get downloaded for you. I have it, so I won't download it. So please, do we all have uh, this, this IDs installed, any of them? Do you have any of the Oh, okay. Anaconda. No problem. Please, how about the others? I think we can, we, we, we can share messages, right? We, we can share messages. So, the this is how the anaconda is. Let me open it first. We'll be using the when you install the anaconda, anaconda comes with other uh, models or other applications. We'll be using the Jupyter, the Jupyter notebook. So if I come here, 
I enter my Jupyter notebook. It gets open for me. Then you can write all the the codes you want to write. It's the uh, anaconda opens in the browser for you. So this one opens. The command line opens. Then straight it goes to the browser. And you see some of these things when we are we start with web applications. Good. Yeah, so it opens for you. Then you decide where you want to keep your codes. If you want to keep them on your desktop, you decide. If you want to keep it in your document, you decide. Let's say my I want to keep in my, my document. That is where I want all my programming files to go. So I go to documents. Then I can create a folder in my document. These are folders in my document. Neural networks. So when I come here, I can create all that I want to do. So if I want to run a program over here, let me see. I want to write any code. First, I go to new. Then I select Python 3. Yes. So you see that it is using port 8888. This is a port number. But if maybe you have other applications that are using this particular port 8888, you may have to reconfigure it or the Anaconda itself will reconfigure itself. Take the next available port. So when you come, this is the interface for Anaconda. This is where you'll be writing. These are the cells. Where you'll be putting all the codes inside. When you run the code, when you enter a code, you, you click the run or you press control, uh, sorry, shift and enter. So let's say I usual hello world. I press shift, enter. Then it gets printed over here for me. I can also go it by this way. Then I click on run. It runs for me. Run. And it runs for me. Then let me do a very simple mistake over here. So let's see that I have a equals to MC Gina. I run it. Then I'm go to kernel restart. I want to do a very funny mistake over here. Now, what when you are using the Jupyter notebook, then which is in the Anaconda, you should know that it starts from one to the top. So from the lowest to the highest. So if I run this one, it's one. The cursor moves to the, the next one. The next cell. I run this one. We have this one over here. A equals to Gina. Now, look at something. I come and print A. It is telling me that the name A is not defined. It is not defined truly because if you look at the cells, 
rather than running this, I came to run this. So one, two, a jump from here, a jump from here, and then I came to run this. So if I want to run this, I have to come back and run this dinner. You see, the number has changed from three to four. You see it this way, but the system doesn't see it this way. The system sees that you've run one first, you run second, and you came to run third. So the arrangement over here wouldn't matter. Now, if I run this one, it will change from three to five. And you see that it didn't give an error again. It's giving an output as dinner. Any question? Why should continue? Any question? Hello? Oh, okay. But I'm sure uh, if anyone has a question, they can uh, do this thing or mute themselves and ask the question. I believe, I believe these ones are fundamental. Very, very fundamental. Okay. So we we'll, okay. So we get to this this part. So this is just to introduce us to uh learning uh IDE that you'll be using. You can use the file to upload or even download. You can insert a cell. If I want to insert a cell here, I can use the plus. Then I insert the cell over here. Then I come and use it. I can decide to cut this one from here. When you do, one thing about the Jupyter notebook is it does auto saving. So you code, you code for a while, and it does the saving itself. When you click here, you see that it shows on title. So you can just click, then you can name your notebook. So Python. Or you can say Python class. Or Python group. Anyhow you want to. You can decide to hide this headers. So that you can get a very good big screen. So it's gone. If you want it back, you go view, and then you bring it back. If I want to insert a cell over here, I click here. If I want it above this one, I go to insert above. There. So it's over. If I want it below, it goes below. Now, all these cells that you are seeing, I can decide to move them up and down. So let's say I come here, I can decide to move this one using this button, the up and down arrows. I can decide to move them up. Or I can decide to move this one down using the down arrow. You change the position of it. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So this is about the Jupyter notebook. Let me go to, and when you want to shut it down, normally what we do is that we come to here and then we click on the close button over here. We don't don't do that. If you want to shut it down. After saving, you just close this one. You go to your main listing and come and click on quit. Come and click on quit. 
it will shut it down properly rather than doing it over here so that you don't stand the chance of crashing the Jupyter notebook. The other uh, notebook ID is the PyCharm. So you see that I have installed the PyCharm. It's also a very good ID. You can also install that one and use it for your programming. You can do anything that you want to do with it, whether if it's a web or machine learning, neural networks or whatever. So you see that it's the PyCharm community version that I'm using. I'm not using the professional one. Kindly use the community one. Don't use the professional. And don't use the crack one. Use, use, just use the community and be free. So my judge being is loading. Sure, 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 sure. Yes, um, let me make um, a very quick correction. Yeah, in fact, they are right. But uh, with Anaconda, you do not need uh, internet always. You would, you would need internet if you want to install other libraries. But without, without that, you can still use it. Uh, had it not been that we are running on a network, I would simply have disconnected from my network and then simply used the, my LAN so that <laughs> so it, it can work without the internet. It can work without the internet. But if you know, just like, just as he said, if there are certain things that you would want to install and you would need the internet to do it in the Anaconda. So thanks for that. So now this is my Python. On the, the first time when you open it, it's not going to show like this. But it's because I've used it for a while, that's why it's showing like this. So you have your environment like this. You just come and type the code you want. Then you run it. Let me see. I use a normal hello world. Then I go here. You see this play button? You have to select it. And I play it. After playing it, when you check the button, the console over here, it has a console. When you check the console over here, you see that the hello world is being displayed. So if I have about 10 hello world, so they are all being displayed over here. All the hello world will be. So all the codes that you'll be writing, 
virtually almost all. You see the output over here. So this is the PyCharm environment. So you can decide if you would want to go with a PyCharm or you want to go with the Anaconda. Any of any of these would be okay. We also have the atom. So let me. Can I close this ID? This app. I hope I can close it. Thank you. You also have the atom. And very often you use the atom when you are we are dealing with or when we are going to our web application. You also have the VS code. Or the Visual Studio code over here, which you can use. The Visual Studio code has more of the add ons that you can just install by running it. So, this, this is a little, or these are a little information about the ID that we'll be using. So you pick the one you think it's good for you, which you are comfortable with, then you use it. And this is this is the atom. This is the atom. Don't save anything. So those uh, the IDs will be using. I hope we are good to go. We are good to proceed. Okay. So, if anyone has a question, let me know. Let me see what we will be doing. No question. I assume no question. So, now, in every program, when we are programming, we know that we deal with variables and we have variable names. Now, the variable is the placeholder, just like I would write this, just like a, a container which will contain your values. So let me say I want to declare a variable called first name. This first name becomes a variable. And then you give it an assignment operator, which is the equals to sign. This one is called the equals to the assignment operator. It is not equals to. It's different from equals to when it comes to the programming world. Now you call this variable, and then you give it a value. So let's say um, first name is whose name should I use? Whose name? Whose name? Whose name? Whose name? Whose name? So let's see Gina. This is called a variable. This is the value, and this is the variable name. This value will be saved inside this particular variable. So in a, in a simple word, let me say that this is a box. And the box is supposed to contain, okay, good, let me use this one. So you go to the market, you have a container, they said fruits. So this one contains all the fruits. A fruit cannot be Gina. So let me say mango. This variable is going to contain only mango because that is what you are declaring it for so each and every time you declare a variable and you give it a value it tells you that okay when i'm person addition this is what i want to save inside you have to use your memory space you are allocating for this value called mango so the moment i go and pick that basket I go and pick the fruit basket. What do I expect? I expect to see only mangoes. So 
when you run it, you see that you are having mango. So variables are placeholders that contains values in our programming. So always and always, when you declare a variable, you give it a, 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 a value. This is a variable name. The variable name is called fruit. Then you can call it for the for what you have in the fruit, and it's going to tell you, oh, uh, mangoes in the shame. <clears throat> what we have is mangoes. Are you okay? Now, when you are declaring a variable, there are certain rules that you have to follow. You can start with any alphabet. You can start with underscore. You can start with a, a letter. But you can never start with a number. I say this. One. It is not allowed. It is a crime in programming. Don't do that. When you do, you'll be arrested. But you can bring one inside it anywhere in the variable name. So I can say fruit one. Then I come and call it one. It will still print the mango for us. So when you are declaring a, a variable, you should never, ever start with this, a, a, a number. Just start with the letter. You can, the letter can be maybe an alphabet. It won't change anything. You can put, decide to put through F-R-U-T. It is not a crime. You run it. But make sure that you call the same thing here. And it will give us our output. So, in other case, let me say that when you go to a supermarket, or you have, let's say you have a box, and you want to spell it, and you mistakenly spelled it this way, it doesn't mean that what is there has changed. When you are calling it or when you are going to that area, you look for this particular name. So like just, just like what we call, now we are looking for it. You look for this particular name and it tells you that that is what you have over there. So if you are selling figures and then you, you write, uh, let's see, like, okay, let's say you are selling chicken. The old chickens, and then you wrote it mistakenly, your own spelling. You went to write a uh, chicken babies. Let's say you wrote chicken babies. Don't forget that it is your own code. No one is writing it for you. You can decide how to name your var or your variables. Make sure that when you are calling it. It is chicken babies. You don't call a different thing. And then you come and call a different thing. So you run it, it works perfect for you. So chicken babies, that is you your own spelling. Okay, let's go. Can we go on? Okay. Yeah, so this is what the variable name is. So when you are dealing with the variable names, it is always good to make sure that you choose meaningful names that will make your programming easy. And also for someone who would come and look at the code to also understand it. Maybe you are, you are, you are working on a project with other people. It's good to use meaningful variable names so that the other members of your group will understand it. So let's say yeah, you want to create a system to for a supermarket and you know you deal with price. It will be good to use meaningful words like price.
tax. Amount. Now, look at this one, the amount. If you use this one, at least when your programmer sees it, maybe he may understand it. Or use this one, he may understand it. But it is good to use a very meaningful one. So that it makes the coding easy for your friends. You don't make things difficult for yourself. There is no one way to solve a problem. But it's always better to go the simplest way. In as much as your code works perfectly. Go the simple way. Don't hassle yourself. So choose meaningful and simple names for your variables. So I can say price 20 tax 0.56 amount whatever. Then I can say okay price is times let me see my tax times a number or whatever in in, in in the normal accounting sense you can't you don't have to you won't write such a code what is price and size tax number no so you, you do it very easy and simple so that is all about variable naming Take something very meaningful. Make sure you don't bring a space between your variable names. Like price. Then you can't bring price like this. No. It is give, see, it is giving an invalid syntax. It's, it's an error. So don't bring any space. You can decide to bring underscore. It won't have a problem. But no space. No. It is not advisable. It is an illegal act. Don't do it. Now, you see that anytime you write something like this, you write a variable name, and then you give something, we call it declaring of a variable. I bring price, and I said it's my variable. It means that I'm declaring a variable called price. So declaration of a variable. So if you are writing a program and someone says declare a price variable or declare a gender variable, what the person is saying is write a variable called gender and then assign it. So I can say female. Then I can call it, sorry, I can call it, so we declare it, over here you declare, and then you come and call it, the calling is what you are doing over here, so declare, and then you call, you declare, you call, it's always like that, anytime you declare the variable, then you call it, you tell it to come and do this work for you. Call it, you declare over here, you call it over here. So we are calling the variable over here. So this is about the variables. Now, look at something. When I declare this variable gender, I use this double, uh, how do you call it? Is it quotation marks or what? Are you sure? This is not parenthesis, so this is not parenthesis. Single quote. This is I use a single quote. You have a single quote and then a double quote. When you are coding, now no, that the double parenthesis will come. When you are coding with Python, if you are using a single quote, make sure you use a single quote. Just be how do you call it? Be fluent with one way. You don't mix it to give you an issue. If you are using a, a, simple, a, sing, a single quote like this, and you are declaring a variable, which is a string, like this, 
you have to bring the single quote. If you don't bring it, it's going to throw an error. So, gender, gender, we call it over here, and it's giving us this. I can decide to use the double quote, and it will still give us the same output. So just remember that if you are dealing with single quotes, just use single quotes. You currently will not appreciate it. But let me do something over here. Let me say, um, yes. Then look at something. 23. When I call it, you see that it's not true in any when I declare it's not showing any error, I come and call it. Let me put the yes to here. So now it is it is showing it is the yes <coughs> sorry the yes is showing as twenty three. You see that it's also in uh, a quote, the single quote. When we come to strings, you understand. But I think let me explain it once and for all. Now this one, the 23 is a number. It is not a string. A strings are alphabet. A, B, C, D, those ones. They have strings. This H or yes. Let me use H simple. H is a number. You don't have H as string. If you want to declare it, it has to be without a code. Like this. Forget about it. Don't worry about the spacing between. It doesn't make anything. So you run it like this. It is not giving you any error. If I come and call my age over here, you can see the difference. The first age that we declared came with uh, the single quotes around it. Let me do it over here again. Then twenty-three. Now you see that over here it came with the single quote around surrounding it. What it means is that it is not seeing this twenty-three as numbers. It is seeing it as strings. So if you try to add this one, this number is twenty-three to this or to this, it will generate an error. You can't add a string and a number. You can see Acusia plus one. What will you get? Ubenya answer. Now Benya Acusia one. So we don't do that. So always and always when you are dealing with numbers, integers, whatever, or floats, it is good to know that we don't have to bring those whether same uh, double or single quote. Now, let's see this one about a single quote. I have, let me see, name. I'm declaring a variable called name, and I'm giving it the name is Akusia Mansa. I have declared a variable called Akusia Mansa. And I want to print it out. So we use the keyword print. Sorry, print in Python. When you are using PHP, we don't use print. PHP, we use the word echo. Then you bring whatever you want to do. Welcome to. Then you bring a variable name. No, we don't do that here. In Python, we use the word print, the keyword print. And then I use the double quotation over here. Welcome to Aku. Let me see. Now I want to call this variable. If I run this thing like this, it should welcome to. But I want 
the name, what I've saved over there to come. So what I'll do is, I come here. This is called string, uh, string concatenation. So I use the name. Oh, what is wrong? Okay, let me see. Name is not this point. Oh, it should it should even okay. Let me see. Okay, in a year. Let me see this one. Okay. Ah, so what was wrong? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, 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 it's working. So you can see, yes. I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> yes, that, that's true. That's true. So now it is now working. So we have welcome to Akusha Mansa. Now let me do something over here and see. Good. Uh, something has to. Good. Yes, this is what I wanted to do. Now, don't get confused. I'm using welcome to name. Good. Concatenate it. Then, simple English. You're writing, you use this one. Oh, let me see. Restaurant. If you want this thing, Akusa Mansense Restaurant. Can you see this one? Mansense. You look at this one. I use a single quote over here. What's from? No, this one should not come. Yes. I use a single quote over here. Now, you should understand that through all this one, we are using double quotes. But the moment you want to bring this apostrophe S, you have to use a single quote. If you don't bring, let's say we don't bring this one, then we are not using a single quote. We are using, we are using only, we are not using double quotes, but we are using only the single quotes. This one is going to generate an error for us because of this. Okay. You see that this S, uh, uh, S this is not what we wanted. We want Mansa apostrophe s but it's not showing because the reason is that we are using a single quote and if you want the apostrophe s to come you have to acknowledge this one the double quotes over here Too much space. So you have this is the perfect thing that you want to write. So when you are writing your code and you know that you'll be using this kind of thing in your code, you should be very mindful of the single quote and then the double quote and the single quote. As you find problem for yourself.
I hope you are clear to go. Now, let me go here. So th this is about the variable name, when or how to write the variable name. And when you are writing code, don't forget that you have other people that are joining you with your code, or even yourself. Sometimes you write you write a code, you go, you come back later, and then you say, ah, what is it I have written? I don't understand anything. Um, I have an image recognition system somewhere. Oh. Uh, where is it? I don't know where it is. If I go back to that code, I won't understand anything. Anything. I can't see it. Anyway, let's forget it. So it's always good to make sure that you put you write comments. The comments are to help you and other programmers that are working on the project. So I can write a comment and say, oh, "This is my first Python programming course." When you run it, you run it, but it doesn't output anything. It doesn't output anything. So you can use this one. Now with Anaconda, you can decide to use the, the Jupyter Notebook to maybe output something to your people. You click inside, you go to Markdown. Look at the behavior of this thing. You see that it changes and it's different from the others. Uh, if you want to change the font size, let me bring this one up there. You keep adding this one, the dollar sign. So as you kept adding, it also kept it decreasing yeah yes i can hear you okay what i'm saying is that if you're using those of us who will be using the jupyter notebook when you are writing the code it is always good to remember that the code you've written today Tomorrow, when you come, you will not understand everything that you yourself have written. So it is advisable that while you code, you put a comment statement. The comment statements are not statements that are executed as part of the program. They don't output anything. They serve to give you more information about what you are doing, about your code, what a particular function or what a particular class is doing or what a particular variable is doing at a particular time so when you are using if you are using jupyter or an, let me say yes anaconda the jupyter notebook you can use the uh, the hash symbol but before you see that we have a code here markdown row heading so you can use the markdown when you use the markdown you come and press this symbol the more you press the more the size so let's say welcome to my python class when you run it oh no it ran as a code Markdown, good. So you see that it shows like a, a, a form of text. So you can write this one and start putting all your codes over here. Oh no, I don't know my. It's not Markdown. It's a code. So yes. 
the output this one so you decide if you can use, if you want to use the markdown you can use you can just use the one hash or the pound sign is it pound or hash it's hash then you write okay what you want to tell yourself or other programmers when they take your code and this is my first python code and then you run it when you run it it doesn't output anything it is just there to give you information so always you should make it a habit to comment it is not only by this you can use this one oh my right, guy okay. you use you can use this one when you are writing or uh, especially when you are dealing with functions you define your function whatever it is then you come and explain what the function is going to do with it you write it over here when you run it all this thing will not output it will not output but you yourself you get information when you pick it you realize oh this function is doing this particular thing at this particular time so you make it a habit to always write down comments no matter how small or big the project is no matter how small or big the code is just make it a habit and then put the sign or uh, the comment statement over there it will help yourself and help other programmers too i hope you can go on is there any question In fact, we, in fact, we said one hour. One hour. And I think we spent one hour. So it means we are in a two hour. So we spend a maximum of two hours. And then we close for the day or for the week any question any suggestion okay so Okay. Yes, I can hear you. In fact, we can hear you. Mm. Yeah. Okay, uh, we've it's it's been grouped into I think three. We have the the syntax error, uh, the logical error, and then there's another one. So uh, it's it's been grouped into three. It's a group, but let me say to you that when you are coding, in some of the things you don't keep it in mind. You have Google, and so but the moment it comes use it i can't keep all these things in my head my brain is not a computer so you just make use of the google types of errors but we will handle when you get to errors you see the types of error and how to handle it we will come across it we will be solving it Google it, the types of 
errors in Python or Python programming or other languages so too. But I, we have the syntax error, which is also the have the uh, logical error, and there's another one. I can't keep those things in my head. Please, are you are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, but when you know the type of errors, sometimes it helps you when it when when you write the code and it chose the error, it tells you, okay, this is a logic error or logical error, that's a syntax error. You know that, oh, okay, this is, then it is about this thing that I'm doing. So let me, I, I have to be to moving very, very fast. Now, I think there's no question. Let's go to data types. Now in Python, we have not only in Python, the, in other languages, program language, we have different different types of data that we use. We have the string, we have the boolean, we also have the float, and also have the integer. I'm starting the same class. Now, this one, two, three types of data. Uh, types of data. When you are coding, you know that when you talk of string, it means it's from A to Z, and anything which is inside the bracket, when you declare it as such, you see it as a string. When you are dealing with float, when you the float variables they deal with any numbers that has to do with decimals. So especially in business accounting, two uh, twenty uh, twenty three series fifty pesos. This thing is a float. So when you are dealing with it, you declare it as a float variable. It's a so the data type is a float. When I am using it or it is 84. It's an integer. When I have an issue where I have to decide between a true and a false, a yes and a no, it is a Boolean situation. So we have the, what we call the true or false. Sorry, we have a true or false, and that deals with boolean, the boolean variables. So very often you use this one when you are dealing with uh, when you are dealing with our loops. So I'm, I'm, I, in fact, I'll be moving a little faster. Please bear with me, and if I'm going too fast, you you bring me back. So let's deal with. The string. Now, when you are coding, when you are coding, and you are writing something, I know that no, this thing should not be a string. It should be a number. You have to convert it fast into a number so that it doesn't generate an error. If it has to be a uh, a float, but you are accepting it from the user. When the moment you get it from the user, before you tell the system to process and output it, convert it first. Now let's take a very typical example. Let's deal with, I think as for string, we've been, de we've been dealing with string. Hello, those things. Let's say I want a name. And I said, oh, uh, no, let me see. Okay, a name, let me use name. And I said, oh, I want this name, bring me this name. Let me go to the, this step. I didn't want to go there, but let me go to it. Now, I want a user to give me the information. We have a keyword, what we call input. Sorry. Then you bring your carry bracket. Then 
your either a single quote or double quote. Then you talk, enter your name. Now, after entering it, then I said, oh, print name. So I ran it. Then the code, the system is asking me, enter my name. So I said, oh, my name is Asari. So it has taken the name Asari and I'm using the word print. The print is to output what to, or it prints to screen what I want. So if I go to a supermarket, I said, enter your name. You have, let's say you have a friend or your auntie or your uncle has a very small supermarket and you want to automate, you want to digitize it so that they can use the computer. Okay, I can see that I declare a verbal call customer name or customer. Then I tell it to give me the name of the customer. Let me put this one here. Then yes, I then amount. Then I tell it to to bring the input. Then enter amount. Then I want to declare another another variable called. No, let me not use it. Let me not use amount. Let me use price. Then quantity. So I tell it use the keyword int uh, input. Input is a keyword. So I tell it enter the quantity. Now this thing is a price. This is a quantity price. You should know that as for price, you can get it as zero point something or something point something. It could be two dollars ninety nine cent. If you don't convert it, you are taking this is this system will accept everything that the user or the teller enters as a string. Now you. Let's say we put our amount over here. Our amount is equal to what? Our price times the quantity. Then you come and tell the system that, okay, total, let me do it this way, total bill is amount if you run this code you are going to get an issue but let's try let's run it so we run it enter custom, enter name so you so see John James then we press enter then enter amount it should have been enterprise Let's say twenty-three dollars four cents or forty cents, and the quantity is seven. Now you see, can't multiply sequence by non-int type of int type. The system is seeing your code that you've written as strings. You can't multiply price and this quantity. How can you multiply it? It is not possible. So what you do is you come and convert it before you output it. And so this is the way to convert it. This way, let's say that you want to go this way. You can declare it upfront from here. Float and take note of this the quotation. The the bracket
specific note of the bracket you have the float then input you bring what you want to and the quantity now this is the quantity maybe your system it's not something that a be okotor are going to buy it one kilo or 1.5 it takes whole numbers the one you can just put in to accept only integers let's see something over here oh what have i done i think i've done something wrong there's something wrong invalid in done something wrong so let me run it again so now it says customer james now amount the which is the price is a flute so you can say 34.50 then the quantity the quantity let's say four now it is telling you that the total bill is this $138.00. It is because you were able to convert this into a float. That is why you are getting this result. If we have not converted it, we would have gotten the same error we had initially. And now, you see that the quantity is inch over here. Let's run it again and see what happens. Customer. Then amount. The amount is float. Points. And then the quantity. Let's say five points. It's half a kilo. So one point five. It's giving us an error because you are telling the system, you are telling it that the quantity, the variable quantity should accept int. When you take <coughs> the distance, the when it takes the input from the user, when the teller enters it, it should convert it. It should convert it into int before at, doing the uh, the multiplication. But you went ahead to enter a float number, which is one point, what one point five, which is a float. It is not allowed. So sometimes when you are programming, you have to anticipate some of these moments. So as simple as that, then put a float over here. You put a float over here. You run it, and then you don't have any problem at all. So points. Then the quantity, you know, it's float. So half a kilo is this. We are getting an answer so always and always make sure that you convert whatever you are taking from the user before you output it now let's say that I don't do it this way I don't do it this way I said input don't forget the keyword input please enter the unit price. Let's see. So item name. Input equals to enter name of item. And then uh, quantity. The don't forget the variable names. You, it is it doesn't mean that the way I declare it should be how you should. You can declare it anyhow, so long as you understand it. So long as you understand it. So quantity uh, input. 
enter the quantity of items but now let me bring a space in between now when you have it this way customer name enter the customer name enter the name of item enter the unit price when you have it this way what you can also do is that after taking the price from the user before you even do anything you come and create another variable and then convert it over here then put the price over here the same way quantity sorry quantity then we make it float over here then our amount come and declare and say our amount is equal to our quantity times the price ah shit so we output and we tell it to print amount so customer name yeah and enter the name of item mango juice selling it and cry mango juice I enter then ask the teller or what or the customer whoever it is to enter the unit price so the unit price is 20 plus points this what is the unit price then what is the quantity oh let's see the quantity is this so that is doing the calculation and giving us our result of this so you can declare you can convert it this way this way or the first way as we did it so this is how you convert data types whether it is string to float or float to string this is how we, de we declare or we you convert them are you good to go we are stopping at 7 30 so it's now 7 13. Can, can we continue any question please ask Any questions? Um, if you want to ask a question, please I ask. Which is the float? If we enter a integer type, let's say oh, uh, the example is let's say I'm buying a new computer. So the float you expected uh, and expected to be for the integer. You enter an integer instead of a float. Is that what you mean? Yes. No, you shouldn't throw an error. So, computer science programming is just by doing. So, let's do it and see. But it should not throw an error. So, customer one or two. Then the name of item is called to, let's say the name of item is a uh, Mango, the mango I don't know. Then the unit price is 
then the quantity the whole number let me enter two so twenty Madam Maria okay so it will not generate any error but if you do it the other way around it will generate an error because you didn't tell it that you are giving it a float you told it you are giving it an int and then they come and give it a different thing maybe that is a breach of contract Can we go on? Are we okay? Are we okay? I think we are. So, when you are dealing with all the data types, just make sure that this is how you do it. You don't do anything different. You either do it this way or the first way. Whichever way you feel that it's very flexible for you and to you. Just accept it, take it, and move on with it. <clears throat> Any question again? Any question? Yeah. Is there no question there? So, if no question, then I'll quickly move on. Let me touch something now. So, we've dealt with this one, the data types and how to declare a variable. And let me go to another thing. Declaring, let's say we want to declare a constant. We want to declare a constant. So, sometimes in your code, when you are writing the code, there are certain things you can't keep on changing, changing. No. You want to declare it as a constant. Something like, L, what do you call it? Maybe it's a business enterprise or enterprise something. You are building a system for a supermarket where they charge taxes. The best thing is you come and declare a constant for it. Give it the distance and go your way. So let's say tax. whichever way you want to do it then you give it zero point let's say the tax it's five percent of whatever the person buys so when you write let me copy the same code over here I can we put it here and then put it here no, let me not confuse people. Let me put it here. Now, when you are doing your calculation, you know that you multiply the price and then the quantity. Then when you are done, you multiply it with the the tax. So over here, like this. Let me just copy it and make sure that I don't do certain mistake. If I run this code, let me tell it, let me use the print command and tell it that, okay, the tax on your purchasing is this. Then I tell it the total amount.
Let me see. Aztec Vision. S. This. Now let me do something over here. Amount one. And then amount two. Maybe. So you want let's say you want the customer to know that this is how the customer is going to pay before taxation and after taxation. So amount after taxation is this. Now let's let's just tell the user that. the total amount or bill without tax is this so we bring our amount one and run this system as this code and see so customer name of course yeah Now, the item is, let's say, Okoto Fufu. Enter the unit price. So, 30 plus 26. Then, enter the quantity of items. What? So, 0.5. Look at here. Over here, you are telling the person that the total bill without tax is this. 2,266 and then the tax on this is this now I, I didn't spell in the so after taxation this is what the person is going to pay so okay the person says it's, oh okay this is it and this is the tax. So when you go to sometimes when you go to the the malls, you buy, you take the receipt, you see the tax amount, the actual amount, and then amount of taxation, you see it over there. We declared this constant. We didn't when we are we were entering, we didn't enter this tax. No, it is not for your users to enter this tax. You enter it once and for for them. So you declare it as a constant and just call it in our code or in our program over here. So that is it. Now there's this thing called paid mass. When you go to when we are into let's say when you go into how do you call it? Board mass. The P stands for parenthesis. The E stands for exponent. The D stands for divisions. The M stands for multiplication. The A stands for addition and then the s stand for subtraction when you are coding this is and you are doing mathematics make sure that it falls is in this order so that you do not get the wrong answer now i have a variable let's say a equals to Two plus let's see two plus four times five minus ten divided by this this could like this 
if you want to do it, you can say that you can try to say, Oh, okay, then let me do this. Way. 10 divided by 3. Then when I finish, I keep my answer, I come and subtract it from 5. Get the answer, multiply that answer with 3. Get that answer, then add 2 to it. When you do it this way, you jeopardize your entire system. You get the wrong answer every time. So when you are coding, you should be very, very precise. If you know that, oh, okay, you want it is rather this plus this. Let me see something. And let's see, let's output A and see. Now, A is giving us 13.6666. Assuming this is not the answer you want, what you want is this one should add this 2 plus this, which is what 10 uh, 5 and multiply 5 by 5, 25. Then after it, it should go and divide this one by uh, 10 by 3 and then subtract it from this from the 25. If that is how you want to do, you want to do it, doing this will give you a wrong answer. So on per one item, just put this thing over here. You want it this way. You want this one to divide this first. So when the system sees it, it said, oh, okay, paid mass. So parentheses. So what it's going to do is come to work this first and this first. So let me see, let me copy this one and give it a variable B. Now, this one is giving us 21.6 and this one is giving us 13.6. The same numbers, they are giving us different answers. So when you are coding, you should be very careful and tell the system what you want to do. You don't allow the system to tell you what it wants to do or the output it should give you. You are writing your code. So you command it, do this. And it should do according to how you want it. So you put the bracket, you want it to add this one, do this one. So the system will come and add this two plus three. So we do with parentheses first. So when it comes here, okay, I see parentheses. So that is the powers. So we deal with this powers first. Then another power day here, another parenthesis day here. So go and do with that. Forget about the division. That the division is it comes after the parenthesis. The division is inside it. So we just stack it everything in each parenthesis. So this plus this. Leave it. It is five. Leave it. Then this one of it, uh, 10 divided by 6, is this 6 point what? 10 divided by, 10 divided by 3, and then. One can tell me, science is one. 10 divided by 3. Mathematicians. Hey, massive one. Oh, mom, BSC science for a massive one in you. So, 3.3. .3. It has done this. I need it. We inside need it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> then, or be any multiplication. Now, after the parenthesis, you see that we have multiplication. We also have minus subtraction. A subtraction it comes at the last 10 and see we bring 10 times 5 because multiplication comes before subtraction so you get what 25 now the 25 then we have what 3 points and see a fair now we are not so bad at 10 and then you get your correct answer so you should 
always remember this so that you don't get any problem now when you are coding and now let's say i want two square you don't write oh i'm gonna them for what's that symbol like this no 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 it is not like that you use the double multiplication sign like this so it's going to see that okay this exponent so it's two square exponent four exponent three exponent eight so if you want an exponent use the double multiplication please we don't use l uh, times over here oh shit don't use the times or oh, oh shit that's important don't use the times to give you a different thing altogether an error because this is a string you want to and you understand so if you want an exponent just make sure that if you look on your keyboard the number eight at the top it has it so you just press shift and press the eight twice and then it will give you what you want so if i put this thing here and copy it as a lazy programmer can paste it and bring the out so what it does is by powers you know that the parentheses so it will take the parentheses first then it sees that there is an exponent so it will not go to even this one all this one and so on it will deal with this exponent first so 28 exponent 2 that is 28 squared it will do it then come and do the addition inside the bracket then from there it comes here it come and deals with this parenthesis then it goes on to do the multiplication between this and that because the subtraction has a lower priority then you do the subtraction later So that is it. I think this should be enough for today. We've seen how to declare variables. We've seen, we've looked at the mat mat uh, mathematical, what do you call it? How to use, how to use this uh, mathematical symbols when and how to use it if you want a division you use this you want a plus you use this you want an exponent you use this if you want a, mat a multiplication you use only one star to do with it and then maybe if it's i think maybe next week we'll have to do with uh, maybe list and how to work with a list and how to work with dictionary maybe or something there's let me introduce you to this thing before we go conditional statement simple i didn't hear that can you please repeat what you said i didn't hear okay okay good Yeah. Yeah. So if it's cube, let's see. So you have to use this. You have to use the double star so that you don't get a wrong answer. If you don't write the program well, you always get an error. And one thing about program when 
they are writing and they are getting errors. It, it frustrates us. And errors are like death. They are inevitable. No matter what you do, it will come. But you try as much as you can to see how you can minimize it. But you can't do away with it. You can never do away with error. It will come. It will come. Bam. Sometimes it's very simple. You think, think, think. You don't get it. Let's give yourself some break. Get some hot coffee. Come back later. You see it. So that is it for now. Um, let me say this one: the conditional statement, an if statement. Now it's common in our programming. I should have gone to list and uh, how to work with list, but let me introduce you to the if condition. Next week we'll come to the list, or we'll continue with the con uh, if statement, and then see what to do. Now, an if statement is just telling the person, you are giving the person a condition. I remember I proposed to one girl. She says that I accept you if you do this. So what it means that if that condition is never satisfied, which I know is a trap, she will dump me into a very big gutter. So when you are writing your code, you tell it, okay, I want a gender. Gender should always be equals to, let's say, female. Now, you declare you declare this variable gender, and you said it should only hold this. The, the, the variable, the variable, the value symbol. But you go there, then you tell it. You see, if agenda is not now, I was telling you about this in the earlier. I told you that this equal sign, if it's single one, like here, it is an assignment of which you are assigning this whole thing to this. If you want to be equivalent equal the you want the equal you have to bring the double equal so now you come and tell you that okay if you've written your code the person come into the house should be a girl if the person is not a girl she's not welcome so now you said if gender is equal to female then you bring this column over here you bring it this one then you tell it that if it is not if it's equal to it then you print the statement telling oh you are warmly welcome to my house Run it. Hola. Oh, you are welcome to my house. So, if you are a lecturer and you don't want males to come to your house, by all the just write your code at the entrance. You come, you enter a gender, you are a female. Who say you, you can enter? You are not, you can't enter. So there is another way of doing this thing or telling, asking the user to enter it in him or herself. So we don't forget, we use the input statement, sorry, the input keyword. And you tell it, oh, enter your gender. To assess your invitation, okay. Then let's run it and see. So, 
Sin Bill. Then he said, Oh, you are work you are warmly welcome to my house. So you see that this thing has run. Now let's see this one. Entire agenda. And let me write no. I wrote no. The system didn't output anything. It is because we gave it only one condition. He said, if the person is a female, let the person enter. Else, if the person is not a female, you are not telling anything to the person. Opa unjina ho. Opa onsan e chinko. Ande anye wasan. It's not part of your business. So one simple way of being satisfying the two conditions is what we have the if and then the else statement. So you can tell you that, okay, if the agenda is female, good, you're welcome. Other than that, ah, don't try it. Stay your house. So we have what we call indentation. You see that there is a space over here. The moment you run this, the ID automatically see that you needed an indentation over here, which is a space. So it does it for you and then runs the code. So now let me add another one. Print. I'm happy that you finally came. Ah, then the sorry. I'm happy that you finally came. The system will run all the code that satisfy this condition. So, female says, You are welcome, warmly welcome to my house. I'm happy that you finally came. Now, if you want the person to have another choice, tell him, Okay, if you are not a gender, you are not a male, no, you or okay, you don't even care. All that you care is female. So you come and put another statement which we call the else statement. It's like this. Else, then you hit your enter print. Then you tell the person that you are not allowed to enter for this party. Now, let's run it and see. No. Voila. It tells you you are not allowed to enter this party. So, you've given the condition that if it is this, fine. And say, oh, you have a shop. Or to shop. Or this shop is always well. Anyhow you want. Any time you set, maybe I didn't come out. Both things. So you set your conditions for your users or your friends. So once that condition is satisfied, it will not happen. Now, well, uh, I think it's actually at the it's uh, as if I think this is okay for now because you're spending over two hours, so you can try all these things and let's see what happens. If you have an error, if you or you have a an issue, you can just put it on the WhatsApp group. We look at it. Look at it error that is coming and then we see how best to do with it so therefore this is what we are going to do write a program that accepts only dogs 
in your house. This is a very sim simple and easy one. Write a simple calculator. To add two numbers and then write a program for a shopping. More. Declaring amount of items the quantity. Someone asking a question. The quantity. And then you declare the profit if any. So This, this, these are the three codes that we'll be writing. It's, it's very easy. We don't have any formality, but just make sure that it gives us a, a result. Any question? Can we close? If you have any questions, let's see. And then let's hear you out before we close. If you have any suggestion to you can bring for this if statement, we will go more into it. We will go more deeper into it. I think it can even take us a whole day to tackle it and tackle it well. Yeah, okay. So, as I'm here, any question? In fact, we are here. Any question? Any question? Any question? OS No question. Any suggestion?
any suggestion any suggestions 